Hello everyone, I'm Joy Patel, and I'm a middle school student, and today I will be talking to you about the ongoing sixth mass extinction, also known as the Holocene extinction. Ordovician mass extinction. 443.8 million years ago, 85% of species died. Devonian mass extinction. 359 million years ago, 95% of species died. Permian mass extinction. 251.9 million years ago, 96% of species died. Triassic mass extinction, 210 million years ago, 76% of species died. Cretaceous mass extinction, 66 million years ago, 80% of species died. Interdependence, also known as a food web, is a circle of life. Let's take this diagram, for example. If the grasshopper in this diagram were to go extinct, think about all the other animals that would either lose a food source or go extinct. It's a small-scale example, but even one simple grasshopper going extinct could affect millions of animals. Let's take another example, bears and salmon. There's an equal amount of bears and salmon. The bears eat all the salmon until a small amount remains. Then, the bears start dying because there aren't enough food sources for them. Then, the salmon will reproduce, and this war will keep going back and forth. But say, at one point in time, the bears eat too many salmon, and the salmon don't have time to reproduce, and they go extinct. All the animals that rely on salmon as a food source will be greatly affected and could possibly go extinct. Let's get to the bottom of this. There's an extinction, but why is it happening? There are tons of factors to an extinction, but major ones are pollution, ocean layer destruction, overexploitation, animal extinction, and loss of organic matter in soil. The underlying cause of all these factors is human activity. The extinction is largely occurring due to pollution. Pollution is causing several holes in the ozone layer, which are letting in harmful amounts of sunlight. This is causing an imbalance in the environment. One way you can fix this is by using things that are less harmful to the environment, and try to cut down on plastic and use more natural materials. In the past, the main reason extinctions have happened is because of a sudden rise or fall in temperature. This is also known as climate change. chlorine and bromine atoms come into contact with the ozone layer, they destroy it. The ozone layer could be destroyed faster than a rebuilt at this point. When pollution is released into this atmosphere, it reacts with the UV lights in the sun, which causes harmful rays of UV light to hit the earth. This contributes to climate change. When chlorine and bromine is released by fossil fuels, destruction of the biomass, and various industrial processes, they react and destroy the ozone layer and allow large amounts of UV light to enter the stratosphere. These substances are called ozone-depleting substances, also known as ODS. The global use of ODS is increasing rapidly, but not all of chlorine reacts with the stratosphere, such as that in swimming pools, sea salt, and volcanoes. There's no natural process to get rid of ODS in the lower atmosphere. Overexploitation, also known as overharvesting, is when humans use renewable resources at an unsustainable rate. Humans are using up natural resources before they can reproduce. This includes animals, plants, trees, and soil. Overfishing is becoming a huge problem. The consumption of seafood has doubled in the past 50 years and will continue to grow exponentially, which makes making, making sustainable practices very difficult. Many animals have already started dying, but we may not notice it. For example, since 2010, about 46% of honeybees have died because of climate change. Another example, woodpeckers. A species of woodpeckers called ivory-billed woodpeckers are dying. As of 2005, there are approximately 10,000 woodpeckers left. But recently, they're on the breach of extinction, with less than 40 woodpeckers remaining. This is caused by deforestation, habitat loss, increased use of pesticides, and global warming, also known as climate change. Lost organic matter in soil is becoming another rising problem, both because of climate change and pesticides. Climate change is indirectly affecting the earth due to UV exposure from the sun, but pesticides are directly killing the organic matter in the soil. Two-thirds of soil now has low amounts of organic matter. For a soil to be considered healthy, it has to be 10% organic matter. Pesticides can kill bugs, which are important pollinators, but it's also killing organic matter. Soil might look for fertile after pesticides are sprayed, but the organic matter will soon die. Soil will no longer be farmable. Based on the rate which soil is diminishing, in 70 years, 90% of soil will be considered unfarmable. In less than a century, humans have become the global top predator. Humans slaughter almost 150 million animals a day. 
We humans use 40% of the planet's primary production for ourselves. Humans burn fossil fuels for energy, which are extremely high hazardous to the environment. Most importantly, all of these problems are happening not because of natural causes, but because of us. What are the solutions? We cannot stop this extinction, but we can certainly delay. One way to delay this is by working together. There are many people on the planet, and today, together, we can do a lot. First, we must reduce pollution. People are sacrificing the planet for health for money. Money is a human-made concept. It doesn't really need to exist. We don't need factories and other pollution-causing factors. How do animals live? After all, we are animals. Humans need nothing other than food, water, air, and shelter. We don't need money. Think. How will there be pl- how will there be money if there is no planet? Due to pollution, the ozone layer has been breaking. There's only one real way to fix the ozone, and this is to reduce pollution. The ozone layer is renewable if we give it enough time while maintaining a clean environment. Even though the situation is bad, it's not completely ruined. In 1987, a pact called the Montreal Protocol was formed. It's a ratified agreement between all the world's leading con- countries to ban or reduce certain substances that are extremely harmful to the environment. This did succeed in reducing the, si- of one- oh, the reducing the size of one of the few holes in the ozone, but this treaty is now being disregarded. People are still not using the items that are banned, but finding alternative items that are just as harmful. Example, that w- it is estimated that we have at least two to three notable holes in the ozone. The other rem- remark is that we need to fix overpopulation. This is becoming a growing concern. There are too many humans and not enough space for them. Next, we must stop using pesticides. Pesticides are way too harmful to the soil. Soil will eventually be unfarmable. Would you rather have some bugs and be able to grow plants, or no bugs and no plants? Bugs deserve to be on the live on Earth just as much as we do. After all, they're just doing their job. Another important solution is to plant trees. If there's any way to fix air pollution, it's this one. They purify the environment. Spread awareness. This extinction is becoming a growing concern, and we need to spread awareness of it. We have approximately 8 billion people on the planet, and together we can save many. There are over a trillion species, several will die, but we can change this. Thank you. Last, so I hope this presentation encourages you to make some change. These are my references. More references. Bye.